This morning we'll be in the uh, in the book of Numbers, uh, looking at a, a passage of scripture. Last week we uh, used Joshua as a character, and uh, this week we'll uh, uh, use him again um, as that uh, something that uh, the Lord sort of laid on my heart uh, early in the week, and even uh, as I was uh, preaching last week on him, uh, some things uh, uh, concerning about the church and his stand uh, on. Uh, things in his life, but uh, this week we're going to look at an event that took place with him that uh, I think uh, has an application to uh, a lot of things that you and I might uh, experience in our life or have experienced, and we're going to look at him this morning and look at something, but we'll be reading for a text verse out of Numbers chapter 14 this morning, beginning in verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me, saying to them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which you should, said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which I have despised, which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which you search the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall you bear your iniquities, even forty years, and you shall know my breach of promise. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in this wilderness. They shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned, and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moses told these sayings unto the children of Israel, and all the people mourned greatly. As we uh, consider this passage about the children of Israel and about Joshua, uh, the fact that they would not be allowed to uh, enter into the promised land, that they would be cursed uh, to wander in the wilderness. And we're going to look at that subject this morning. I've entitled this sermon, Made to Wonder, Made to Wonder. Let us pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for the day, for what you've given to us, thankful for a time that we can uh, gather in your house this morning and around your word. I ask that you might help me this morning. You might fill me with the power of your spirit. Help me to preach. Lord, uh, we just pray that you'll uh, bless your word to our hearts. May each and every one gain something from your word this morning. Father, we pray you'll bless and encourage the class in the back. And again, we thank you for all that you do, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. As uh, we uh, look at this passage and concerning uh, the children of Israel, and again, it's where they uh, had come. And uh, you may remember the spies that went into the land. There was 12 of them, Joshua and Caleb. Among those spies, they would go into the uh, land to spy out the promised land. Ten would come back with a, uh, a negative report, a bad report. And here we have the account of uh, God's punishment for that. And just to give you a few uh, things of background on Joshua again, uh, we again used him last week. And uh, thinking about him this week in Exodus chapter 24 and verse 13, uh, Joshua was sort of Moses' right-hand man. He went up halfway to Mount Sinai with him. Uh, You can find one reference before that uh, where he would lead some guys in battle and he was chosen to uh, be a warrior and uh, to lead those men. Here he's chosen as a... Uh, Moses, second man, if you will, and he would go halfway up the mountain. Moses would uh, get the law of God and come back down, and uh, that's when they'd hear the war in the camp, and uh, Joshua said it was uh, the sounds of war, but uh, they said it was uh, music that was going on, and uh, anyway, they were having a big party, and Moses would throw the tablets down, and you may recount, recall that particular event in Scripture. In Numbers uh, chapter 13, we uh, see that the spies are sent to the promised land. And that, again, included Joshua and Caleb, one from each tribe. Twelve in total would go to spy out the land and then bring a report back. And so uh, we see that. And we can see what their uh, their 
report of that was, or actually them trying to encourage the children of Israel in chapter 14 that we're in, if we go back to verse 6, And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land, and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us, fear them not. And so Joshua and Caleb came, and they gave a good report of the promised land. Uh, they uh, said, you know, hey, it's something we can take. If God wants us to have it, he's going to give it to us. Uh, let's trust the Lord and let's go do this. Uh, again, they were passionate about it because they really felt and believed that this was what God was going to give them and God was going to provide a way. You may remember the other 10 came in. And they said, oh yeah, it's a land with uh, milk and honey, but we're, uh, we're grasshoppers to them. There's giants in the land. There's walled cities. And, uh, and that was true. I mean, as far as uh, you remember, the first city they encountered was Jericho, a walled city. And uh, those folks were scared. They were afraid. They didn't trust that God could fulfill his promise and give them the land. Those 10 spies, by the way, as we read, God would kill them with a plague. Uh, they wouldn't even live uh, past this particular event. They would uh, die of a plague. And so uh, those, uh, according to what God was going to do to them, those that were 20 and above would not be allowed to enter into the promised land. Uh, they would all be killed off in the wilderness as they wandered. And of course, Joshua and Caleb with them. But Joshua and Caleb would be permitted to enter the promised land. Of course, Joshua would go on in Numbers chapter 27 and verse 18 to, to succeed Moses. He would be his successor and he would take the children of Israel into the promised land. Both Moses and Aaron would not even be permitted to go in the promised land. You'll see that recorded in Numbers 20 and verse 12. Uh, Moses, because of his sin, and uh, God would, uh, would hold that and he would not permit him to go in the promised land. He would only be able to view that. And you see that in the close of the book of Deuteronomy, the close of his days, uh, the God uh, allowing him to view the promised land. In Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 21 through 22, though, we see that Joshua understood that the Lord was going to fight for him. And so Joshua was told that, again, he would be the leader to take him in. And that, again, he believed and was told that God was going to help him and that he would fight for them. And so Joshua will lead the children of Israel into the promised land. But during this time, and all that would take place with the children of Israel in this particular time, understand what was going to go on, that for 40 years the children of Israel would wander in the wilderness. Joshua and Caleb would wander with them, even though they did what was right, as we might say. Uh, they had uh, did everything that they knew. They trusted the Lord. They believed that God was going to give the land to them. They gave a good report. They were ready to uh, follow the Lord uh, wherever he wanted them to go to take the land, felt that God was going to give them that. But yet they would be made to wander in the wilderness for the children of Israel. You know, uh, occasionally, as we would say, good people are punished when they did nothing wrong. And I say good, understanding that we're all sinners saved by grace. Uh, we have to trust in uh, the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary and uh, what Jesus did there for us uh, uh, paying our sin debt. And that's the only way we can be saved. And we're still not good. We're still sinners. Uh, but I guess I use that phrase because that's the way people view it sometimes. They look at it and they say, well, those folks did nothing wrong. And yet they're lumped into that same crowd. And that's what we're going to see an example or we see an example of today. And I want to focus on that a little bit this morning and give you that. But again, understand we all, uh, none of us are good. I guess when I say that, I want to clarify that we're all saved by grace and uh, we have to come to Christ on an individual level when we believe upon him. But as we live, our, our lives are definitely and can be affected by the actions of others. And that's exactly what we see here. That Joshua and Caleb, their life would be put on hold, if you will, or it, maybe not necessarily put on hold, but uh, 40 years of their life would be spent wandering with the rest of the nation of Israel all because of the actions and the responses due to the 10 spies report and the response of the people to that. And so um, we're going to look at that this morning and think of that. And I thought of some examples, and some of these are sort of, I guess, uh, uh, maybe uh, they can be a little bit funny, I guess, to us. Uh, 
especially as adults, but I thought of some situations that we can all probably think of to get an idea of what happens when uh, we're made to suffer or we're made to endure the consequences of another. I thought that, you know, maybe it could be caused by uh, a sibling. You know, kids, uh, they're all riding in the with a car in the back seat, mom and dad say, you know, hey, if everybody behaves, we're going to stop and maybe get a treat or maybe uh, do something special. And you always have that one who messes it up for the rest of them. And, uh, you know, and you may still hold that against uh, one of your brothers or sisters or uh, something of that. That Maybe they were always that one. But we understand that, that mom and dad and me, as parents, we've done that. You know, hey, if you both behave, if you all do this, you know, we're going to uh, reward or we're going to do this or that. And it's lost because one does not. We may understand it and remember because of being in school. You had uh, students and uh, a teacher might say, if the whole class uh, does this, then you know they will get a privilege. And maybe it's uh, extra time at recess. Maybe it's uh, some free time or uh, something that they were going to do special. But you always had that one, maybe more than one, maybe the same ones. Uh, they could mess it up for the whole class. And uh, the teacher would not uh, offer the reward and not give that. And uh, part of a group punishment, as we might say, we understand those kind of things. Most of us have probably been in a setting like that. I even thought even at work, uh, you know, uh, we always have uh, things that have come uh, and you may have uh, uh, been affected by a coworker, someone who has uh, done something uh, uh, wrong or maybe they didn't follow the rules or the policies and it resulted in new rules or it resulted in maybe a loss of a benefit or a change of a policy and it's all due because you had a few people who quote didn't follow the rules or who wouldn't uh, do any different and because of that they made a new rule and it usually included everybody we've all been a part of those kind of things we've all had those particular events affect our lives and because of those things we understand a little bit about when someone who supposedly done nothing wrong is punished as part of a group. Joshua and Caleb sort of fit that same thing. They were made to wonder because of the actions of the others. And Joshua and Caleb, they would wonder the 40 years, one year for each day that they spied out the land. Let us understand and remember that disobedience always has a cost. God had told him that he would uh, understand and that, that, uh, that he would again show him uh, the breach of his promise and again, it's not that God uh, broke his word, but they didn't fulfill their part. It was a conditional promise. God said, again, you've not come and you've not trusted me. You've not uh, relied upon me and not. Matter of fact, he wanted to take Moses. If you read through some of the passages here before this, he wanted to take Moses and offer to make a great nation just out of him. And he would uh, kill off all the children of Israel. And Moses actually interceded for him and said, Lord, uh, you know, and he pleaded for the people and God would um, would forgive and come back and he would uh, come back to restore the people. But here they had to suffer for their disobedience and disobedience always has a cost. Sin always has a payday. Let us never forget that. And uh, even on small levels and levels today, when we disobey God. There's a cost that comes associated with that. And here the children of Israel will pay and many of them will pay an ultimate cost uh, for their lack of faith their lack of trust of what God had promised them. And you think about it all the time that they had come from the uh, d deliverance of bondage from the land of Egypt and through all that they've experienced in the uh, trip uh, from Egypt to the land of Canaan and the edge of it. And they had trusted God. They'd seen God's hand. I mean, they had had many times of rebellion, many times of uh, other uh, problems, but yet God had uh, worked and had been faithful, had provided, uh, had done so much for them. And then they don't feel and they cannot trust him uh, to get them into the promised land to take care of their enemies and to continually give them that land as God had promised. And so because of their lack of faith and their lack of trust, they were made to wonder and Joshua and Caleb with him. But as we see Joshua, and we'll probably just refer to him from now on, uh, focusing on him as our subject this morning, I want to think a little bit about Joshua and, um, and in particular just thinking because what would he experience in his 40 years of wondering? And think about it again. He's made to partake of this wondering, not because of something he had done. Matter of fact, he had tried to do everything right. But yet because of the actions of others, he was made 
and put into this place of wandering and would wander in the wilderness, as the scripture tells us, with uh, the children of Israel for 40 years as the old na- the the folks above 20 would be uh would die in the wilderness and it would be that younger crowd that would go with and Joshua would be their leader and he would eventually take them into the promised land but let us think this morning and I want to give you a few things uh that God had sort of laid on my heart about this about what Joshua experienced in his 40 years of wandering and what I think you and I when we find ourselves many times put in a place, not maybe because of our own actions, but because of what somebody else has done and where we have ended up. And again, what we are to do uh, to serve the Lord and to be faithful in the place that God had put us. And that's one uh, reason that Joshua serves as a great example of this, although we're not recorded a lot of those events that happened during this wandering, just that time period and those things that were there. But yet we don't see Joshua uh, having a lack of faith. We don't see him, again, going back on the things of the Lord, questioning God, uh, even being angry with God about why he was uh, made to be a part of this. And again, think of our reactions when sometimes we feel we've been uh, slighted because of the actions of others or forced into a place because somebody didn't do right. But let us look at Joshua and think on him this morning. I want to give you some things this morning that I hope will be an encouragement to you when we endure these things and let us think about that. And first and foremost, I think his patience would have been tested. And uh, how is it that when we uh, get in situations like this, it surely is that way that, yeah, we, it's easy to run out of patience. You think about the situation I gave with um, coworkers and those and uh, results in some new rules or changes of things. And uh, it's pretty easy to, to lose our, um, Uh, to lose our patience with somebody and uh, come to a place maybe to say things we uh, didn't need to say or just to uh, be upset with them. And, uh, you know, here Joshua is putting a a really tough place for him uh, as far as his life being put on hold as well. He was ready to go and uh, just thought, well, God's going to give us this land. and uh, It's a land that he's promised to us. It's a good land. It's got all the blessings he promised with. He's going to take care of our enemies. Uh, We're ready to go. And yet this happened. And now his life's put on hold and he was made to wonder. But his patience was tested. And I guess I was thinking of a scripture uh, when we deal with that. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. It tells us, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. You know, uh, when we find ourselves in a place of, uh, you know, that God has put us there, uh, maybe not to the actions of our our own, uh, but due to some other things, it still again falls into the place that God would have us to be at that time. We want to be faithful to Him. We want to realize we want to have some patience and we must wait upon Him because God still has a plan. Matter of fact, Joshua still had promises to him that were uh, still in effect and that were still there that the Lord was going to enact in Joshua's life if he would just uh, continue to serve Him. And uh, Joshua was promised and already told that he would be the one to take the children of Israel into the promised land and that that would be something he would do. And uh, God had given him this promise that patience was the key, that he would have to be patient and waiting until the fruition of those things would come to pass. And so uh, when our patience is tested, let us make sure we wait upon the Lord and wait until his plan is presented in our lives. You know, secondly, this morning as I... Think of the things that Joshua may have dealt with. His uh, testimony was was tried. You know, I can imagine that, uh, and even as as we go through things in life, you know, uh, so often we uh, think of our testimony, and uh, many of us don't like to uh, maybe consider it, but uh, just the fact that you're in church this morning, uh, people know that you may read your Bible, you talk of God, you uh, pray, you may would try to witness to others. Uh, they know you as a Christian. They may, You may be the best Christian that, that somebody knows and probably are, whether family, friend, co-worker, but uh, you may be the best Christian they know. And unfortunately uh, to us, uh, we because we can say, well, it's not fair, although it should be fortunate to us, people watch us. Uh, they uh, watch what we do. They watch how we act. They watch how we react. Uh, let it be understood that our testimony is important to us and that uh, we are to consider that. And the years of living a faithful life can be lost in a moment because we 
uh, reacted poorly or wrongly uh, to a situation and we didn't allow the Lord to lead us there, and uh, left the Holy Spirit behind and we uh, speak in the flesh or speak those things that uh, maybe we shouldn't have. And uh, we have to understand that our testimony is important. I'm sure that Joshua might have had his testimony tried during these times. He's around the folks that were without faith, the folks that were not willing to trust the Lord. His life was put on hold because of others. He again would have to guard his testimony, guard his heart, guard his words. He didn't want to become uh, bitter at those folks. He didn't want to become angry at God. He didn't want to become uh, in a bad way because of it. Don't let us lose our testimony when we're in a place of testing and understand that our testimony is important. And I think we, uh, uh, from all we know in Scripture, we don't have Joshua doing that. His testimony was important. His place was important. And we find him just, again, choosing to obey the Lord. Thirdly, this morning, let us think that Joshua learned to trust the Lord. And uh, during this time, he and I'm sure he did before, and obviously he was willing to trust him to take him into the promised land and to defeat their enemies. But oh, what a place that he was put in now, thinking that 40 years of his life was going to be spent wondering just because that was the punishment given to the children of Israel. Not something that we might say that he deserved, but yet something that he was a part of just because, and because he was one of them. And so when uh, he considers that, Joshua would have to uh, constantly uh, look into his heart and realize that he has to trust the Lord, that this is what God has now, and that God uh, is allowing him to go through this, and he will see him through this, because he has promised, again, things on the other side, and that there is rest coming for the children of Israel. And it may be a little longer now for them to receive that. But you and I, even as we serve the Lord, so often we have the promises of God. We have much laid up for us in the future and things well beyond this world that are laid up in store for us. But many times we find ourselves in these situations. We find ourselves uh, set to wonder, maybe made to wonder uh, as we think on this morning due to the, the actions of others. But it should push ourselves back to a place where we learn again to trust the Lord with all things. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. But let us learn again to trust in the Lord, to put Him first, and uh, again to uh, allow Him to have every part of our life that we're just going to lean on Him we're going to seek Him, and we're going to again follow Him and what He would have us to do. I think Joshua probably re-examined those things in his life, the promises that God would give him. And of course, as we know, the rest of his life and what would happen after this wandering, that Joshua would lead them into the promised land, and he would conquer the enemies there, and we see him coming to do that. Fourthly, this morning, looking at the life of Joshua and what he did while he wandered in the wilderness, I think his reliance upon God uh, was something that kept him again going and sort of following on the trust. But you know, God provided for him. And God still provided for the children of Israel. God, they were still God's people. Even though they were suffering under an act of their disobedience and the repercussions from that, God still took care of them. And uh, now those folks were condemned. They were going to uh, die in the wilderness. Maybe not in the day as those with the plague. He could have took them immediately. He took those 10 spies uh, by a plague. That seemed to be pretty immediate action. Uh, some of the children of Israel decided that they were going to do things their own way. Matter of fact, if we had kept reading there in, uh, in our text passage, some of the children of Israel after that, they said, we're just going to go into the promised land. We're right beside it. We're going to go. And they decided they would go without God. And so they march up the mountain and they take a group with them and they decide and they run into the enemies. And of course they were told, you'll go without God if you go. And they decided to go anyway. And they ran into, again, the nations that uh, lived on those mountains and the nations who uh, were the enemies that were going to be there. And the Amalekites and the Canaanites that were there, uh, they ran into them, they did battle with them and they lost uh, sorely. And uh, so those people would when they decided to go outside of God, uh, that's what exactly happened to them. And it was an example to the rest uh, that the Lord still has things 
in control. And you and I, when we decide to step out of God's plan and we want to step out, we leave his protection. We leave his guidance. We leave his will. When we step out of that, we no longer have that in our lives. And we are subject to those things because had they went into the promised land and met these same people and they were following God and uh, they hadn't made a choice not to follow him, God was going to take care of their enemies. And he would do just that later in years when they would enter the promised land. Joshua understand that, understood that and Joshua would have a reliance upon God. And as he would enter into the promised land, he would continue to rely upon him. You and I can turn to God for our needs. Lastly, this morning, we look at the last thing that I think that Joshua, he had a resolve to continue on. And it's something we see in the life of Joshua. I read some of these verses last week and as I uh, preached some things about him and I'm going to uh, use them again this week. But even at the end of his life, and we see throughout his life that Joshua just had the resolve that whatever God put it before him, I'm just going to stick with him. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to serve him and live for him. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15, he said, as he closed out this message to his uh, people and to them, his family, and he said, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And uh, Joshua spoke for his whole house. He spoke for his people. I think he had done that for all his life. He said, we're going to serve the Lord. That's where I'm at. That's what I'm going to do. And we're just going to follow him. In this case, the people responded in verse 24. And it said, and the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve in his voice will we obey. At least for that time and right now, those people decided that they were going to serve the Lord and that they were going to do that. You know, when you and I find ourselves in a place that we are made to wonder and maybe made to wonder not because of something we necessarily did, but because of some of the deeds of others. But, you know, God may have a plan in that too. God had a hand in Joshua being a part of that. And Joshua would come out the other side. He would be given, uh, again, command of the children of Israel. Moses would pass away. He would succeed him. Uh, again, he would encourage the people and they would go into the promised land uh, with God's leaderships, they had a little uh, hiccup there with the sin of Achan that we find. But, but other than that, we find Joshua conquering the land with God's help. Because even when he was made to wonder, Joshua remembered some things. And his testimony was important to him. He had patience. He didn't lose uh, all that with God and with others. He looked back and I think he learned to trust again and lean on God during those times. His reliance for all his needs was upon God, his protection, his future, his family, all that he had. And he just had that resolve to continue on. And he would do that all his days as he closed out his life with that passage and says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This morning, if you're called to a place to wonder and you're put in a place where uh, you may be wondering, uh, may we do it as God would have us to. May we see his will through it and may we follow him. Let us uh, stand with our heads bowed this morning as we close our time. Of